Trey Gowdy is chairman of the House Oversight Committee. Sir, if I could begin with your previous life. Um, before you came to Congress for 16 years, you worked in law enforcement. You were covering a lot of these cases. We were talking about investigators interviewing Mary Lou Danley, uh, the girlfriend of Stephen Paddock. What would you want to ask if you were in the room? Well, it depends on whether or not I consider her to be a suspect uh, or, or a witness. Um, and you got to be really careful because what you don't want is her invoking her Fifth Amendment privilege and not answering your questions. Just, just opportunities to detect a change in language, a change in, 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 in his vocabulary, the way he discussed things, anything that we could use to detect the next shooting, if she's a witness. If she's a suspect, it'd be a very different lane of inquiry, but, but over what period of time did he amass the weapons and the ammunition? You know, one thing I'm really curious is, is you know, you say he sent you away to the Philippines. Uh, you, you know, you're the one that decided to go to the airport and go through security and board a plane. Were you suspicious at all? How about the wiring of $100,000? I, I want to know what we could have detected this time that will enable us to better prevent it the next time. So all of us have been trying to find, you know, searching for some sort of motive. We have no information. Like, there's nothing that, at least from my perspective and reading all of this, nobody can really has an idea of what made him do this. Um, but from you, from a law enforcement perspective, do you have any gut instincts that would tell you maybe what happened here? Well, this is what I would say. Number one, that is a perfectly natural question. And every homicide victim's family that I worked with for 16 years, that was the dominant question. Why did this happen? I would just tell my fellow Americans of good conscience, uh, there is no explanation, no motive, no trigger that can explain this level of depravity. So when I read articles about debt, lots of us are in debt, but we don't hurt other people. Lots of us had bad childhoods. We don't hurt other people. So we, we got to be careful to not look for a rationalization for what is an act of unmitigated depravity. So you on Capitol Hill are being asked now to take a look at and consider uh, additional gun control legislation. Um, I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit. In particular, I wanted to point out this op-ed I read in the Wall Street Journal today. I thought it was very, I'm sorry, it was the Washington Post today. Um, it was a woman who used to work at 538, uh, which is, you know, the Nate Silver's group over at New York Times. It looks specifically at statistics. And she says, my colleagues and I at 538 spent three months analyzing all 33,000 lives ended by guns each year in the United States, and I wound up frustrated in a whole new way. We looked at what interventions might have saved those people, and the case for the policies I'd lobbied for crumble, crumbled when I examined the evidence. I think, sir, that there would be some people that might be persuadable on gun control legislation if there was anything that could point to what could have been done to pre prevent this that, you know, if we, if we could do it without infringing on Second Amendment rights, maybe we would do that. Where do you see the gun control debate going on Capitol Hill after this? Well, Dana, I think it's important for your viewers to know we already have controls of what kind of guns you can have, where you can have them, when you can use them, and, and what individuals can even possess a single bullet. So the question to me is whether or not the current controls are adequate. And there are two fundamental questions you just put your finger on. What law, had it existed at the time, would have prevented this mass killing or another mass killing? What, what law, but for its lack of implementation, could have prevented this? So that's one question. And the other question is, among all the panoply of current gun laws, how are we doing enforcing them? It is currently against the law for someone who's been adjudicated mentally ill to possess even a single bullet. But if you look at DOJ statistics, you will see a very few number of prosecutions under that current law. So I would ask the same thing of the current Department of Justice that I asked for eight years under President Obama. Before you ask for new tools, convince me that the ones you have now are being fully used and are inadequate, I'll be, I'll, I'll be open to, to a piece of legislation that will tell me this won't happen again, but you got to tell me how you're using the current gun statutes, and I was really underwhelmed at the level of prosecution over the last eight years. Indeed. All right. Um, Congressman Trey Gowdy, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Thank you.